All right, team, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another episode of FTL Presents the Sacrosol Podcast. And today, my guest is strong as hell. And you guys probably know this guy as Russ Swole on Instagram and YouTube. He's arguably one of the strongest guys in this country and let alone the world. He puts out such amazing good vibes in this world. He's just a good dude. And we just hung out, talk about cool things, how to get strong, but how to get strong mentally in order to tackle this thing that we call life. You want to learn how to be stronger in life and in the gym and walk around life with a big smile on your face and literally listen to this interview smiling the whole time, I highly recommend you listen to this interview. And I highly recommend you watch it because that man's freaking smile is so contagious. Before we begin, please go to iTunes and give the podcast a five-star review. It helps us so much. We have so many amazing reviews. You guys have been killing it. And every time I go in there, there's a few more that just put the biggest smile on my face. So I just want to thank you guys so much. And also, if you're watching on YouTube, please leave a comment below. Who do we need to interview next? It helps us. We will make it happen. And lastly, I want to thank our sponsors, Protein Cookie Company, Enlightened, and One Bars. Let's get into the interview. All right, team, welcome to yet another episode of FDL Presents the Zach Russell Podcast. And today I have someone on the podcast who has got some swag. I mean, <laughs> we, we could call it that, but he's strong as hell. And most importantly, he puts damn good vibes out into this world. And I want to welcome Russ to, onto the podcast today. What's happening, guys? What's good? Hey, um, you guys might know him as Russ Swole. Uh, that's, uh, that's his name around, uh, around the tubes and around the, the grams. But um, uh, today I wanted to talk to Russ more about um, just his journey, man. Like we know he's strong as hell. We know um, that that just takes time to get there. It takes tons of practice. It takes just con- relentless consistency. Mm-hmm. But I want to know more about the background story of Russ. I want to tell a story that, that Russ has never told before. I want, to, I want everybody to get to know the Russ that, that, that bashes the new Dragon Ball Z and all that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I was dying. I was dying. That was so funny. But, um, yeah, so the first question I'd like to start this podcast with is if somebody were to – stumble upon your Instagram page. So we don't have business cards really anymore. Like who has business cards? We say, Hey, just check me out on Instagram. And that kind of gives everybody an idea of like who you are and what you do. Um, and if somebody were to have just been on the explore page, they're just scrolling down and then they happen to click on your profile in the first nine posts, what are they going to know? Uh, why, why would they look at those first nine posts and be like, man, I'm going to keep scrolling? Or why would they click that follow button? Yeah, well, what I try to portray on my Instagram is just a sense of positivity and just overall loving what you do. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure some people pick it up. But if you notice a lot on my Instagram page, I tend to smile a lot, whether it's like, you know, I'm everyone, you know, those bodybuilders, you know, you take those serious like model yeah. face you know, like kind of like looking off to distance really seriously. I tend to think, I think you could impact a lot of people in a different way if you're able to smile and show some type of uh, positive vibe as to what you're doing. So, um, you know, if I want people to take away, if you can look at that and see me smiling all the time in the gym, you could take that and smile, you know, when you're, you know, presenting something at a business meeting or something like that. Just take that much love for what you do. And if you're able to kind of take that away from Instagram, then I've done my job. It's freaking contagious. It's unbelievable what a smile can do. Like you just smile like that and I just <laughs> smiled even more. So like if you guys are watching on YouTube, like you, you, you'll know and you're probably smiling as well. And the beauty of a smile is you can tell by somebody's voice mm. if they're smiling or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can be on the phone with them and they are talking and you're like, you're freaking smiling right now. Yeah, yeah. And it's like the coolest thing in the world. So A smile is something that we – we forget how powerful it is nowadays. Yeah. And we live in a society that we 90% of the news is negative mm-hmm. and we don't really, nobody wants to listen to the things that are positive. Uh, and it's funny back in the day, they did this study where they tried to do 50% positive, 50% negative on the news and nobody watched the news anymore. Because yes, it, uh, another ahead. thing is like, whenever you try to ask people, um, Hey, what don't you like about yourself? They have a list of things. But then if you ask them, what do you like about yourself? They don't really, it takes them a while. They're like, oh. It's so true. It's yeah. so true. And we're our, we're our worst critic. And 
a lot of times people watch the news to make them feel better about themselves. Yeah. Because gosh, if your life is worse than the news, like that's <laughs> rough, like that's really rough. So it's a, we just need more people in this world putting out good vibes. Like we just need it. It's amazing what happens. We see the world completely two different ways. If we go out into the day smiling versus frowning, we see everything. We're constantly looking around if we're smiling, but we're just like in our own shell if we're, we're down. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's super cool. So if you guys don't know, Russ is strong as hell too. So if you could just give them a little bit of context, I don't want to go too deep into uh, the powerlifting world and everything like that, but I just want to give people an idea of how strong uh, you are and, and how you use your good vibes to be a master at your craft. Okay, so um, just to give some context to it, uh, I'm able to squat close to 700 pounds. I bench close to 420. And I deadlift a little over 700 pounds. So um, in terms of strength, that's where I'm at right now. But I try to have fun while I lift. So it's just like, you know, lifting is almost like life. You can't, if you come into a, a workout session with bad vibes, your body is going to probably follow as your mind is, or how your mind is at the current uh, time. So if you're, you know, if you're sad, your lift is probably going to be pretty messed up. But if you come in kind of thinking, you're like, hey, today's a good day. I'm going to smash today's workout. Your body tends to follow. So um, that's how I try to incorporate positivity when I'm, whenever I'm lifting. Absolutely. So I'm uh, right now I'm just like picturing every time like I, <laughs> I, uh, I watch your content, I'm like, dang, like I wonder what Russ, because like I, to be honest, like when, growing up, I, I was a basketball player. So I played, I played D2. I paid for my college education. So I was on a full ride. And um, so like all my friends growing up, I was the five nine white kid on all black teams all the time. So like I was around like that was the culture I was around all the time. So like we'd be at AAU tournaments or anything like that. And I'm the only white kid in the house and like all the black families and everything like that. All my best friends were six eight, six nine, black, played D one. Like and so I was around it all the time. And um, I just picture, I, I, like, whenever I look at your content or whenever I ever see you, I just picture you back in the day um, just clowning on everybody because that was the yeah. thing. Like, yeah, yeah, if, yeah, yeah. if you can't clown on somebody, like, or if you yeah. can't hold your own, you're done. Yeah, yeah, and it was like, it's like a blessing in disguise because it allowed me to know that, like, no matter what, like, somebody's not going to clown me. Like, you can come right back. It makes you quick and think on your toes because, like, yeah. if you don't, man, you're screwed. Yeah. So it's uh it's super cool. So growing up, like take me back to where you were born, what your childhood looked like, what sports you played, and um just talk about your parents, just everything like that. Like kind of let us know what that that early um that early stages of your life looked like. Yeah, so both of my parents are full Nigerian and they were born in Nigeria. So my dad got a student visa to come over here. Uh, he married my mom, brought her with her, brought, brought her with him. And, uh, you know, I have very smart parents. My dad has like a, a PhD, MD, and a JD. And my mom has a nursing degree and, a, and a, uh, a lawyer. Degree. So she's a lawyer and a nurse at the same time. So um, I was born originally in San Antonio, moved to Houston. In San Antonio, like I picked up soccer and basketball. Those were my two favorite sports. Like I wanted to be – uh, Tony Parker so bad. I remember when they drafted him in, and like he was like small and Dude, he's so crafty, man. Yeah. Like it's unreal. Him and Steve Nash are like my two, the two guards that I love to watch to play the most because like they were the two that would that wouldn't do the fundamental layup. They would jump off the same foot, same hand, just so they could get their shot off, and they would do all these awkward things, but it worked. And now everybody's doing it. it it's yeah. uh, they're innovators. But you I can know, early Tony Parker just so quick and. You know, great finisher at the rim, man. Fantastic finisher at the rim. So uh, I grew up wanting to be Tony Parker really bad. But whenever I moved to Houston, like the sport here is football. Like that's mm -hmm. what everyone plays. And I can yeah. run football and I started lifting weights at an early age. Um, in Texas, they start you early, you know, doing squat, bench, and deadlift. So uh, I was squatting. I was, I was lifting weights essentially like in seventh grade. I've always been into like working out and stuff like that just because – I watched Dragon Ball Z at a very, very early age. <laughs> and uh, in Dragon Ball Z, like, they show Goku training and how he progresses and how he progresses. So I was like, if Goku could do that, I could do that. So I remember, like, in fourth grade, I'd be running around uh, the track and I'd come home early. Or I'd come home and my mom would have pancakes ready for me. I eat the pancakes, shower, and then we're out. Uh, it all makes sense now. It all yeah. makes sense now. <laughs> uh, 
I always used to, I always used to, like, as a fourth grade, I don't think people realize how weird that is, but as a fourth grade, I'd go to the playground and do, like, you know, uh, sit-ups and chin-ups and all that kind of stuff, but, so, uh, I, you know, I kind of played football throughout my high school and ju- uh, junior high school career. Um, I tore my ACL in my junior year in high school, came back senior year, played, then after that, I walked on at Texas Tech, and in the process of walking on, I was just like, you know. D1, D1 football is just, you know, it's not my thing. I thought I would like it, but it turned out that I just wouldn't. It's a job, man. It's like literally a job. Like that's exactly what it is. You're spending so much time, especially as a walk-on, having to yeah. really prove yeah. yourself. Like you have to be immersed in it. And you're, yeah. you're literally like it's doggy dog. Like you're trying to bust the, the scholarship guys ask because yeah. you're like trying to make that you're trying to to make your yourself yeah, know. Most the scholarships scholarship players ask and then you have a scholarship player like yo man like chill out it's just like i know so yeah funny. dude it's so hey, hey let's take it easy today no i'm about to bust yeah. your ass yeah. like i can't take it easy today man like my, my walk-on coach is telling me i gotta push you and try to take your spot so yeah, I actually, like i was in the process of getting my scholarship for the team like i was one of the two or three players that was gonna get the scholarship but I had a lot of friends that were, you know, D1 athletes at other schools and stuff like that. And I I started thinking about everything. I'm like, man, like, I'm doing this, but it's going to take away from something that I already built. And that was like fitness, you know, working outside mm-hmm. the gym and kind of pushing that. I was like, you know, all my friends only have like two or two weeks of summer. Like, I don't yeah. know what I really thought it was. Yeah. Well, I mean, the cool thing is you started asking yourself, what's really going to make me happy? And I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing we all need to ask ourselves. It's not about what anybody else tells us we need to do. It's about what makes us happy. And I don't think we, we ask ourselves that question enough. Like if we're not happy, people are like, Oh, that's just the way it is. It's like, no, 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 no. Like the way it is, is the way you make it. And it's, uh, it's a, it's a super fascinating thing because I mean, we're all in control. We're all in control no matter what, like look at your parents, like, this is kind of where I want to go with this is like, how have your parents motivated you? Like being, being immigrants, like they're yeah. coming to this country where it is a complete 180 to what they were, the freedoms that they had. Mm-hmm. And so they come here and they know, wow, like every single moment is a blessing because mm-hmm. I know what the alternative was. Yeah. And a lot of us nowadays, we have no clue what the alternative is because we've been given so much. Yeah. And it's it's like it's it's wild like i almost i wish i was an immigrant um yeah. because I, I i i see it all the time like i complain about stupid stuff like i'm like like you give a kid a pencil in another country and they're like that's the happiest moment of their lives like yeah. and i'm like well is it mechanical like, <laughs> like what what's the lead, what's the lead looking like uh, uh, I, like it my my parents like we used to go back to that all the time and uh, my dad showed me where he grew up. And I was like, how? Like, how did you, how? Like, it's literally a village, you know? It's like a, a village and they build their own houses and stuff like that. I was like, how did you come from this to like where we're at here, like in the suburbs of Sugar Land, Texas? You know, it's, it's absolutely crazy. And he just, it's, he's just like, you can't take anything for granted. When you come from that, you literally have no choice but to go up. So I was just like, when you see stuff like that, you tend to appreciate what you have a lot more and you understand mm-hmm. that nothing is given, you know, you have to earn it and it can be taken away from you very, very quickly. Very quickly. So, what, um, um how, how old were you when you went and uh, visited? Uh, I think I was about eight, seven, eight years old. Do you think that like, that was a, was that a, was that like a big turning point for you? Like seeing that? Yeah. To a certain, yeah. Cause my parents, I grew up, my, my parents have this thing to where they always tell us we could do, anything we want to do like we our parents are our biggest they'll say it's like, and, and can i chime in real quick it, yeah. it's the coolest thing because they're saying that and they practiced it and yeah, so exactly. they pra- like you saw it. and so like a lot of times people say oh you can do it but then you hear your mom or dad complaining about their job that they freaking hate or they're doing all these things that they that doesn't make them fulfillable and then it's like well that doesn't make sense but you like saw it your whole life like yeah. so it, it came from them telling we could do what them telling us we could do whatever we want to do and like we 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 can't be stopped so them finally showing us where they came from like see like this is achievable because we did it for you guys and i was like 
damn, like it, it really can be done. So like I walk around sometimes just thinking like I can do anything I set my mind to. And it comes from my parents and like the foundation they built. That's so cool, man. That's unreal. So up until that point, so let's say your childhood or, um, okay, let's, act, let's actually go to your, your uh, whenever you tore your ACL. Mm-hmm. So you're a junior in high school. What's going through your mind? Whenever, like, like what happened? How did it happen? And like what's going through your mind after that? Mm-hmm. So uh, <laughs> the way it happened was pretty stupid. Well, it wasn't stupid, but I had these pair of cleats that were like kind of like they are ripped, you know, yeah. at the bottom. And uh, we, for some reason, we were playing on a sandy field. It was like a scrimmage. I made a cut, zero, like no contact from any other player. I tore my ACL. And uh, I just remember, like, hearing the doctor actually saying, like, yeah, it's a torn ACL. And I was like, damn, like, that's it. And it just kind of made me realize that this stuff is not forever. Like, it, like, it could easily be taken away from you in one play. So I was like, did, wow. like you saw that whenever you were a junior in high school, like those thoughts were actually going through your, did you ever feel like a victim at any point or was it just automatically like, you know what I mean? Like how we can take that, like, Oh, why me? Why me? Like I've done it before. Yeah. I definitely had that for a little bit, but at the same time, like I dealt, I dealt with it for maybe a couple months. I'm like, how did this happen to me? Like, why? Like I put in so much work, like how could this possibly happen to me? But it had to quickly change to how can I get back on my feet and, like, you know, how can I get better? There's, I mean, there's always those moments of doubt. You're just like, why am I doing this? Is this, is this even worth it? Like, mm-hmm. like what's, what if it happens again? Like, what am I going to do? And stuff like that. But, you know. Do you think, do you think that was a, 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 a in like, in reality, like, it was, like, a low moment for you? But in, re- yeah. like, was it actually, like, did it actually turn out to be, like, a defining moment that, like, actually made you so much better? Yeah, so that was when I started exploring uh, other options in a sense. I'm always a, I'm always like a one plan, plan A type of guy. But whenever that injury happened, it forced me to think about like other options. I'm like, damn, like, like this is uh, this could affect me down the road, and it could kind of like destroy everything that I've worked up until this point. And I had to question: Do I really like or love this sport? Like, am I willing to take it to the next level? And that it kind of it didn't it didn't cement at that particular moment but it definitely planted seeds in my head to where i'm yeah. thinking like okay like do i have any other interests like what else do i like to do in that type of sense you know it's amazing how moments like that like they could be the worst like i had a uh, during my sophomore year of college i uh tore my ilia psoas uh, my right hip which is like yeah like you know the body like yeah. it was like such a freak injury i went to my doctor and they were like consulting with people all around the country like how the hell does this happen and yeah. they found that there had only been three times um in record that it had happened and it was um yeah it was a freak injury and it ended my college career as a sophomore mm-hmm. and it i was in a wheelchair for over a month didn't run for over a year it was awful but that's how I got into the fitness industry. Mm. Like, so it spurred me to realize like everything, like the most important people, like that's when I started studying people that are very successful. Mm. And I realized that they all had a common theme. They had something terrible in hindsight that happened to them, but in reality, it actually spurred them to have a purpose. Mm. And that spurred me into the strength and conditioning world and, um, diving into that more and more because in nutrition, sleep, recovery, everything's anatomy, physiology, because I didn't want anybody to go through a freak injury like that, like me. And so eventually when I graduated college at 22, I actually started my own gym and my own training facility. Mm -hmm. And so I did that for the past two and a half, three years. And I sold it seven months ago and I went full time with FDL. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that was my that was my world. I trained athletes. Like that's what I that's what I did on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just tried to get them to understand that they were in control and they were no never a victim. Mm-hmm. You're never a victim ever 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 ever. So that was like, yeah, that was a huge turning point. It's just we have these then everybody listening like everybody that we've talked to, they've had I mean through 20 uh, 21 or 22 episodes, everybody has had that moment. Yeah. And it's and it's a direct correlation to what they do and what you see them as successful with. And we all have these moments. It's the come up story. We love the person that comes back from that 
that downfall, that thing that they thought that they were going to be done afterwards. But yeah. we love those people the most. And it's, um, it's just super cool. So uh, segueing it, who's your favorite superhero? Favorite superhero? Uh, I, I, was about to say, I was about to say Black Panther, but that's not. <laughs> he's, he's, he's the cool guy at the moment, but it's always, yeah. it's always been Spider-Man for me. Always been Spider-Man. What about Spider-Man? It's just like he, the whole premise of his character is standing up for the little guy. Mm-hmm. So uh, I just, I don't know. I just always like that. You know, it's a superhero that, um, you know, protects people that can't protect themselves in a sense. Mm-hmm. In, in a much younger age, you know, he's supposed to be a teenager. So I've always related to Spider-Man in that sense. That's, that's cool. So uh, what, whenever you were in high school, did you, um, were there ever moments where you like stood up for the kids that were being picked on or did you, were you taught like, I mean, you, I think you yeah. learned that from uh, obviously from um, superheroes and like Spider-Man, but also I believe your parents probably instilled that in. Mm. Well. So I would always, I'm that, I was that guy in high school that was cool to everyone because I, I had so many interests. Like I was, I could be cool with like the anime nerds because I watched anime. I could be cool with the people that played Yu-Gi-Oh and like cards and stuff like that because i did like <laughs> you um, yo yeah i could hang around the jocks because i was i was team captain of the football team so it's like yeah i was able to do so many different things and hang out with so many different people and like those are some of the people that people would like kind of like make fun of but i'm like hey no like andrew's cool like andrew might play Yu-Gi-Oh, but andrew's cool like he has other interests as well or you know emily acts and she may act like in class for no reason but she's still cool too so it's, I always try to bridge that gap between everyone else. Yeah. It, I mean, my dad was the same way. He told me never, you always stand up for everybody. You're yeah. friends with everybody. And, and, and that's what I've realized in life is because each one of those people were like us in the sense of we were, we're pretty good at a few really good things. Yeah. And a lot of people might be really good at other good things. But I admire people that are relentlessly consistent at being really good at whatever they want to be. Yeah. Whatever that is. And it's uh now that I think back, I'm like, dang, like, why did I think some of these these people that weren't so popular were really cool? It's yeah. Because yeah. they they were damn they were good at what they were doing. So it's like it's super cool. Like I, I'm not one into like anime or cartoons or anything like that. Like I don't watch it like very much, but I admire the people who freaking love it so yeah. much. And like it was just cool hearing the storyline with like Dragon Ball Z and like um like how you kind of got the idea to start working out and stuff like that's a that's a cool freaking story like i would have never thought of that it's much how like you respect uh real life people's success stories it's like i can invest myself into believing in like um anime anime character storylines you know like these anime characters they come from the bottom as well they somehow make it to the top and basically the anime just documents how they struggled all the way up to the point of their success. So it's like you, you put it in real people and I just put it in fake people. <laughs> that's, that's, hey man, yeah. either way, that's so cool. Uh, so yeah. let's kind of segue into present day. So you are uh, competing at a, the national, like arguably one of the strongest guys in this country. Um, what you recently placed, what was it? It was third? Uh, yeah, I placed, no, I placed first in my weight class and then third okay. overall behind like literally the strongest man in the world. And, yeah. Like, one of the other strongest men in the world. So okay. they're, like, they're like super heavy weights. So, yeah. And what's your weight right now? Uh, what do you compete at? What do you compete at? I, can, I compete at 183. So 183. Yeah. Okay. So uh, super high level um, power lifter. But – what is another thing that you're working on right now to help spread good vibes? Uh, I know your content just, it just is, I enjoy watching it because I feel better after I consume your content. Like mm. there's no, like if I see your story, if I see a video you put out, I'm all, I'm all automatically smiling afterwards, which is like, yeah. uh, I, that's like, I don't say that much about many people. I've <laughs> done a huge cleaning of who I follow. Yeah. Um, and so, what is what is your your goal in the sense of like in the next couple years with what you're doing like uh, spreading good vibes but is there anything overarching that you're really really working on overarching um it's it's tough to pinpoint that specifically just because there's a lot of like ideas that i have running in my head yeah Uh, 
one thing I will pinpoint right now is the the start of uh, my sock company. Mm -hmm. It's just like, like it's a it's a it's another extension of like the vibes I want to bring. So I'm a I'm a huge fan of like eccentric socks, right? Like you know, um, just socks that just they don't really have a meaning. They're just very vibrant and they kind of bring to your attention. And if like if you're wearing them, someone's looking to be like, oh, those are you know those are really interesting or cool socks. So <laughs> I want to interesting. That. Yeah, I want to help bring that into the world. I'm sure, that, like, there's obviously other companies that have stuff like that as well, but yeah. I want to bring my own flavor and sauce when it comes to providing uh, footwear. So it's That's cool. Well, I don't think a lot of people uh, know this as well. Um, I actually probably a good amount do. You, I don't know if you still do. Uh, you, like, hand draw uh, on shoes like it's a, uh, like a canvas. Yeah. And I mean, it's, uh, yeah. I know you don't have as much time to be doing that anymore. I don't know how ROI positive that was. I know it takes yeah. you a, t a ton of time to be able to do that. A lot of time. Um, I was doing that early. Like when I started, when I first started YouTube, uh, I had my Vans. And like as a little kid, I always used to draw my shoes. Like if I had white Vans, I'd draw on them and make them personal because I've always liked things that other people don't essentially have. Um, so... I started doing that whenever I first started YouTube, but literally one shoe takes me half the day. Or oh, really I can only imagine. Yeah, it's not it's not ROI positive. Somebody, I don't even know what you charge, but you'd have to charge goodness gracious, like five, six, seven hundred dollars to make it when even. I, when worth I first it. started, I was only charging what two fifty. Wow, <laughs> I was only charging two fifty when I first started, and I was like, "This is not sustainable. Like, this is not." You know, so I had to mm -hmm. I had to charge it more and more and more, and then eventually I just cut it off. Yeah, but it's a cool story though. It was a like I, I'll never forget it. I was I always saw you showing off your shoes after you'd finished the product, sending them out. I was like, it was just a cool way to to kind of kind of get to know your creativity mm -hmm. uh, more and more and more. So um, big things in the next. So actually, let's go to YouTube. So. Okay. Uh, if you could only use one platform right now, which one would you use, YouTube or Instagram? It's uh, a good one. I have to say, I mean, YouTube. It's yeah. not, it's, I don't even know why I really thought about it, but it has to be YouTube. Just because, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why. Business-wise, uh, just creativity-wise, there's a lot more you could do with it. Um, yeah, obviously YouTube. YouTube. Okay, so let's go why so creativity why okay so youtube i've noticed to be like the platform that you can go deeper rather than wider uh mm -hmm. you can go viral on youtube but the opportunity cost as in like the cost that it costs somebody like time wise to click on a video and watch a video is a lot higher than consuming your content on instagram you can just scroll and you could see some everybody's posts for um in like very short period of time and um, it's super, it's super interesting because you can have a ton more followers on Instagram than YouTube, but your engagement so much higher on YouTube. It's, exactly. it's super, but YouTube can be a hell of a lot more toxic than Instagram, I've noticed. But if you put good vibe, that's what I've noticed too. If you put good vibes out, you'll get good vibes in return. Yeah. And exactly. if you start talking about negative stuff, you're going to get those negative people just waiting, just waiting. They're waiting for that one moment. And um, yeah, you that's know, what we've, yeah, go ahead. It's funny because I always tell people that I'm like, you, they're like, why do I get so many negative comments? Well, 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 this, I'm like, yo, you dictate the conversation on your channel. You're literally the person that's in control of that. Like if yeah. you're talking about these topics that are, you know, controversial or whatever, expect those negative comments. So that's what's going to happen. You have people that are going to oppose whatever opinions that you have. So I just try to keep it very simple, um, keep it very face value to a certain extent. And I'm like, you know, this is what I do. This is the effort that I put into it. And this is the vibes that I have while doing it. And if I may, if I just do that, it's not going to attract a lot of negative people, you know? Yep. Um, obviously you're going to get a couple of negative comments here and there, but if I'm putting out a positive vibe, that's going to reciprocate a positive vibe. So. Absolutely. I mean, it should be 90 to 95% positive, may, probably higher. Like, yeah. what do you, so it's amazing that like, if, if we're so immersed in positive vibes and good vibes, mm -hmm. how do you, when you get that one or two people that are just like, 
Oh, and, and you focus on those one or two rather than the hundreds and thousands of people that say nice things. Like what would your advice be like for obviously yourself or for me and everybody listening? Like if you get mostly amazing comments, but then you get that one or two, what, how, how do you combat that? I know, you know it, you know it. You know, it's funny though, man. Like I had a different philosophy maybe like a couple months ago, but, uh, I do this thing to where I, sp- I respond to a, a good amount of my YouTube comments. Like maybe a couple of days after I post, I'll go back and respond to a lot of the comments, whether mm-hmm. it's good or bad. And, um, well, if it's bad, I'm not going to say anything, but there might be one comment where I'll say something back. And it's just, for me, it's not even like, like giving someone the time of day. Cause like, obviously I have the time of day I'm scrolling and responding. It's just being funny. Like that just comes from the, from the air or like the people I hang out with, like we always clown on each other. If you're going to clown on me, that means I'm able to clown back at you. So yeah, that's the way I look at it. And that's why I handle it. I don't even think twice about it. It's not like, I'm like, Oh, what does he mean? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Oh, uh, so you think, so you think I'm short. Okay. All right, bet. I'm gonna clap back. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not, I don't, it's, it's never that deep to me. Um, yeah. It's not that theory of like um, three, uh, four people are going to like it. Four people aren't. And then two people aren't going to care. It's, it's not that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I feel bad for people. That's the moment I started having empathy for people that actually would have to take the time to spread negativity oh, and try yeah. and bring somebody else down. Like that changed my mind. Like it changed my life yeah. with my content because my intentions are pure. Your intentions are pure. We just want to help and we want to help people the best we can. And we put so much time and effort into doing that. And the fact that somebody wants to come on here rather than focusing their time on creating content to help other people or adding to the actual conversation, they don't want to give any constructive criticism or anything nice. They just want to yell and be mean and say disrespectful yeah. things. And it's like, and, and people ask me, they're like, Zach, do you block these kind of people? Do you delete the comments? I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, don't do that. Because what happens is if you can train yourself to understand like, damn, like I feel bad for them, but also maybe one day they come around. Like maybe one day they, they see your stuff and they're just like, damn, like I'm an ass. Like, I, um, I, have, a, I have a pretty good story about that. Um, I had an opportunity to actually talk to someone like face to face that was continuously putting negative stuff on my, um, you know, on my feeds or whatever. And uh, he'd always say like, Oh, Russ does this, Russ does that. Or like this guy's lying to you guys. And I'm like, Hey man, like you know that we're doing the same power to me, right? Like I'm going to see you. So um, he's like, "All right, I'm not scared. I'll talk to you." I was like, "Okay." So <laughs> I'm trying to fight. Yeah, so, yeah, no, it wasn't even like it wasn't even. I, I, I'm about that type of person. So uh-huh. when the situation when uh, when it happened, I was like, "Hey man, um, you know, sit down next to me real quick. I want to talk to you." So just talked to him. Told him like, "Hey, just letting you know, like when you put that kind of energy out, you are kind of like." In a sense, you're saying, like, I want other people to feel this way as well. You're sharing, but you're telling other people who are with my vibes, they're like, you're telling them, no, don't do that. Like, don't be with them. I'm like, what came from doing that? Like, you have to look at yourself and really think, like, I never go out of my way to comment something negative on someone's channel or page or whatever. And the people listening, like, think about it. Would you ever actually sit down and, like, type something – like negative to someone so you have to think about where someone's coming from when they do that and that's when you realize like that person themselves is probably insecure about what Absolutely. you're doing and it's not about you it's not yeah, about it's you sucks. that's yeah and the thing and the thing that sucked was that he's he's a younger kid he was like 17 18 i was just like hey man just letting you know like going forward uh i, I didn't appreciate it but what i want you to kind of realize and kind of look upon is like why are you doing this? Like, why are you commenting these things? I don't know. What are you trying to accomplish? Like, what are you trying to accomplish? I could take it. Like, I don't really mind, but I want to ask you, like, what are you doing this for? Like, what can you do? So, uh, we're we're not cool, but he definitely appreciated that moment. And like, you know, we're, 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 we're cordial now. Like, we're fine. Like, before it was just like, why are you doing this, man? Yeah, I know. Like, it's, it's tough because you have to understand where somebody, yeah, where somebody is, in that frame of mind. Maybe they have had experiences in their lives to where the people that they looked up to, that's how they responded to things. That's maybe that's how their parents treated them. Like their parents never gave them the time of day to say, Hey, you can like, like your parents did and my parents did. 
telling both of us that we can do whatever we want. We can change the world. We can do all these things. And they had an abundance mentality that we can do whatever we want. But maybe his family didn't have that. And they told him, oh, well, you have to do this. You have to do this. Oh, you can't do this. You're not good enough for this. And then it's like, well, you see us like, then you see somebody else doing it. And you're like, well, you can't do that because the people that they looked up to told them that they couldn't do it. And it's like, damn, like when you go that like far back, you're like, well, no shit, they're going to troll us and they're going to try and bring us down because nobody has ever told them that they could do otherwise. And it's like, Damn, like, man, it's like, that's deep. Like, that's so deep. Yeah. Uh, but it's so true. And so anybody listening, like, understand that if you have people in your life, like, and, and maybe if it is your parents telling you that you can't do something. I'm not saying don't hang around your parents, but I'm saying kind of minimize it. Understand that, like, um, my mom, so, like, my mom and dad told me that I can do anything I ever wanted. But my mom is very, like, has just pessimistic by nature because she's very cautious like always thinks of like, what's the worst thing that could happen rather than the best thing that could happen. And so I noticed that anytime I had an idea, I would tell her and she would say the first negative thing that came to mind. And like, I told myself like, I'm going to let her watch, but I'm not going to tell her what I'm working on. And so when she sees something success, she tells me, but I don't have an early idea to where she has the thing where she has to look at the negative first early on. And so that might be something you guys can do more of is focus on telling them the successes, but don't tell them early on in the process because they'll probably shut it down no matter what you're doing. I don't, I don't think people, that's a, that's an interesting point you just made. I don't think people realize how defeating it is to tell someone like early stages of an idea. And then like immediately the first thing they do is say something like, nah, it just Something stops negative. momentum. It's like, boom, like you're just screeching. Questions, everything. Like, and I noticed, like, I just realized that whenever I bring something to my parents, like it's an early idea, it's an early idea. And they immediately start brainstorming. What can I do with this? Like, what can I do with that? Blah, 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 That's blah, so blah. awesome. Yeah. That's so I remember awesome. when I started drawing, my sh- drawing on the shoes, my parents have been telling me to do this since I was like in seventh grade. Cause I've been doing it for so long. And they're like, see, we told you it was a good idea. Now let's go to China and look at factories where you can produce it at a large scale. I was like, whoa. So freaking <laughs> awesome. I was, hey, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was like, whoa, whoa, calm down, calm down, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> go to China and find a factory where they can do this. Dang. Like, you know, fights right now. I was like, oh, my goodness. So I Damn, just I'm fired up, man. I want to go hang yeah. out with your parents, man. Yeah, I just I was like, my parents really, like, if I have any type of ideas, they just, like, they hit me with questions. Okay, well, what we need to do this, we need to do that. And it's just like that fuels kind of like the thought process and the ideas because if they were doing the opposite, I would feel so discouraged and I probably would just abandon the idea as a whole. It's hard. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I had to be honest, like my parents were amazing, but they were not the most uh, encouraging people in the world. Like uh, they, they knew I was successful and they knew I could do whatever I wanted, but they always were, they, they did it because they loved me. So that's yeah. the biggest thing. Never forget guys that your parents love you more than you will ever know. And so anything they say is what they think is going to protect you from being not as fulfilled and successful as you want to be. They're scared for you. And the moment I realized that was there was no spite towards them. It was just, that's just how they are. And that's how they choose to love me. And that's how people have loved them and their experiences in their life have showed them. That's how you should love. So like, don't take it too serious. It'll just have it. It'll happen over time. Like my mom's gotten less pessimistic and more um, because she's seen it. Like, She's seen everything grow. And so she's just, she's starting to see the possibilities mm-hmm. and that's where things really change. It's like, guys, like it's funny. My parents still don't get what I'm doing it's because <laughs> it's, it's so far fetched from anything they could have ever imagined. They were both employees. They both like we got a paycheck and then um, they just don't understand it. And like, I'm not one to talk about money or anything, but my mom is somebody that understands money mm-hmm. and the moment I, I was like, man, I was like, how do I get her to understand this? I said, I just went to my bank and I put her on my bank account just so she could just like log in because she likes seeing that kind of stuff. And yeah. so I was like, all right, mom, log into my account. And she's like, she's like, okay. And she logged in and she was like, she's like, Zach, are you like selling drugs? Like, what are you doing? 
And uh, <laughs> I guess he didn't understand because I built something that was completely different than she could have ever imagined. She just didn't understand it. And now they're like, whoa, like this is really cool. Because yeah, yeah. the way people make money nowadays, the way you provide value in return for money is different. Like it's so much different nowadays and you can reach more people. The world has 7.7 .7 billion people. Like yeah, yeah. You don't need that many people to be successful. You just need to make those people that raise their hand and want to support you the most special people in the world. Yeah, exactly. And I try to, like, I always say, like, hey, man, all you need is self-belief. Like, all you need is one person to believe in you, and that's yourself. So, like, whether your parents are believing you or you're not, you have to make sure you take it upon yourself to execute whatever plan that you have. Um, I do understand, though, that outside forces can play a role, but you, mm -hmm. have, to be, um, you have to be strong in your resolution. Yeah. And that like you could do whatever it is that you want to do. In life. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny. Like we live in this world where there are so many outside forces, but yeah. once we have the perspective that everything is a learning experience, mm -hmm. everything changes. Like everything is meant to make us better. So whether it is, if you come at like something like you tearing your ACL, well, actually that sends you in the direction towards where you are today. And you are the most happy person person I think you could be right now like I think obviously there's things that we can always be more happy about but we are both very good vibe driven and we're happy with where we are and it's just understanding that everything that's going to happen to you whether it's a conversation with your parents whether it's and you could think of it this way think of how your parents are motivating you right now but then think of how you would want to do it a little bit different for your future kids and think of that as like input. Like for me, I'm going to be like, just like your parents, like I'm going to be more excited than they are when they tell me an idea that they have. And that's, that's going to be a huge thing. So I'm learning from that. But then I have empathy and perspective that my parents are doing it because they love me so much. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, guys, this is a good podcast guys. Like this is going deeper into why can you be happy on a daily basis? Like we don't want a life of spite or anything. We don't have, have, don't have spite towards anybody. Like really understanding your emotions and what things, if something comes in, why does it make you feel like that? And then have a, a bad feeling come out. Like different things, just be aware of that. Be aware of that. And, and when in doubt, smile more with like 100,000%. So we're getting towards the end of the podcast. And so as I get towards the end, we lead into the final question. And the final question is an interesting one, so I got to set the stage. So today is Russ Swole's funeral. So there are, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we I have. Funeral, then all of a sudden it's my funeral. So, oh. Yeah, I know, right? Dang, I know, I know. This is always a surprise for people, but it's it, it, it'll be a good one. So today's your funeral. There are thousands upon thousands of people there mourning the loss, but also celebrating your life. And there's somebody on stage about to give your eulogy. You have no idea if you only met them once at an expo or they just followed you on Instagram or you've known them your whole life. You have no clue, but they're about to start your eulogy. What would the life that you lived lead to the eulogy that they say? It's a good question. That's a, it's a good setup. I mean, like, I would hope I would just leave people believing that I left them or made them a better person in terms of give, gave them some type of motivation to have confidence in what they do. Um, I always try to stress that like, you want to be, you want to work to be the best that you possibly can be. Um, try to stay in your own lane. You know, being the best you could possibly be doesn't mean you necessarily have to be the best. It just means that you enjoy what you do on a daily basis and yeah. you're absolutely having fun. And if I could instill that to people that followed me or people that I've touched, then that means I've done my job in a sense. Because at the end of the day, man, happiness is everything. You know, money's cool. Um, cars are cool. Big houses are cool. But at the end of the day, it's like, are you happy with what you're doing? And can you go home? Can you go to sleep with a smile on your face? And if I could do, if I could play a part in helping people achieve that, you know, little little portion of the smile, I did my job. That's amazing. I just picture like 
one thing that you guys can do more of is when you lay your head on your pillow at night, just smile before you go to bed. Yeah. I, I if, just, you have, like, if you have a partner that goes to sleep with you, it might be a little bit weird, but. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what are you smiling? I'm just smiling. <laughs> just smiling. I love you. Uh, <laughs> Um, but awesome, man, Russ, I want to take a second right now just to say that I, I appreciate you. Uh, I don't know how many times I've come across, like, and I've been in not a great mood and I come across your, your content and it puts a smile on my face. It puts me in a better frame of mind and it, it, it makes me smile. And then thus that affects everybody else that follows me and is around me because I'm in a much better, um, I'm, 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 I'm so much happier. I, I just think of like the times when I would play my best in sports. It wasn't when I was serious. It was when I was smiling. Yeah. Like my fa- my parents used to, my dad would notice like if I, whenever I was warming up for a game and if I looked too serious, I wasn't going to play well. But mm-hmm. if I was smiling and joking around and I was dancing and all that kind of stuff, I was going to play the best, my best game. And he would always keep me aware of that. And uh, it's amazing what a smile can do, guys. And so I, I highly suggest you guys go and, and follow Russ. Like, go show him some love because this man is, uh, is, is somebody that I look up to a lot. And I, um, he's a partner in good vibes. So uh, I just want to take a second to I – know, I know all this takes a lot of work. You spend a lot of time doing this. And I uh, just want to say I appreciate you. No, I mean, I really appreciate that, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, another episode in the bags, guys, I want to say thank you all so much. You know that I appreciate your attention, your good vibes and everything. You guys make me feel so fulfilled on a daily basis. And it's, it's, it's an amazing feeling being able to wake up and go to bed every night with a smile on my face, knowing that I'm, I'm living my purpose. And it's, uh, it's all because of you guys. So thank you so much for listening today, or watching on YouTube. Have a wonderful day. Go smile more. Go make somebody's day better. Go make somebody else smile. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode. So as always, thank you. God bless. Love you guys. We'll see you then. Thank you, Russ.